Should we handle two and three in the same vein? Because they seem to be. Uh, what are we approving here? Well, for the so I would handle them separately, personally. Okay. Yeah, we'll just take them one at a time. So number two is the uh, Marin County Grand Jury Report draft response um, to Marin's retirement health care benefits. The money is still isn't there. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, you know, as background, as everybody's aware, uh, they've released, actually they've released a slew of reports, all kind of in the last two months of the year. These are two that the district was asked to respond to. They're the only two that I'm aware of at this point in time the district's been asked to respond to. Uh, these draft responses in here are fairly straightforward and consistent with how the majority of the way we've responded in the past as well as the way other agencies have responded in the past. Uh, this is certainly up for discussion. This is, uh, they have to be discussed in a public setting and they can be modified very uh, uh, easily prior to submission. Uh, so by all means, please, any comments, thoughts, questions, additions, edits? Isabella? Um, I overall uh, found it to be a very good response. Uh, thank you for putting it together. Um, on item R9, um, I don't know if board would agree, but I would suggest to offer that um, our district is currently in negotiations, and the cost containment of um, of that is our top priority. I don't know if the, the sort of summary sheet in front is a standard form that is filled with blanks in or what? Right? Yes, the front page it is very much a standard form that is uh, provided through yeah. the Attorney General's office. Okay, I well, I, I would, a couple of things though. In the recommendations numbered one, two, four, six through eight, I suggest you do one, two, four, six, seven, and eight, just to be clearer. In the next line, just to be grammatically correct, R5 has, not have. And it says will be implemented in the future. It just seems that isn't particularly informative to anybody about what's happening. And I don't know if it's if that's the way it's supposed to be done, but it seems like something a little more explanatory uh, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, all I can say is on this cover page, again, this comes directly from, uh, the, the district did not make this. This is a fill-in-the-blank um, standard template. Okay, because so they request we provide. And that's why we include the uh, letter to follow. Yeah, I understand that, because the third item, uh, I think the text is somewhat inconsistent with what it says. Uh, the, the form is almost like taking a stick and poking it at them in the eye, where at least in your follow-on responses, uh, you're explaining what you're doing or trying to do. And if, but if these are the words they gave you, I guess uh, that's what we ought to do. They're the words they gave us. Uh, they, every agency is, is, again, standard kind of government form. Uh, it's not even specific to the Marine Grand Jury. Again, I'm pretty sure this comes from the Attorney General, I think. I just followed the link. OK, well, that, that's my comments on that. Yeah. Um, the overall tone of the responses, I think, um, speaks to the fact that this board, since we've been seated, has been paying close attention to OPEB and also to pension liabilities. Um, as a refresher for those of you who have not heard this before, um, OPEB <coughs> unfunded liabilities exceed our annual budget. Um, the ARC, or the annually required contribution for these post-employment Healthcare benefits approaches approximately 90% of our annual budget. Um, in context, the park department all by itself is about 12% of our budget. So you can see that these post-employment benefits are starting to become an extremely um, critical expenditure for this district and one that we cannot afford. Fortunately, OPEB at this point, the annual required word is a misnomer. They are not annually required. In other words, we do not have to pay cash every year in order um, to fund those. However, by not doing so, 
the unfunded liability that goes to our balance sheet and will be reported from this point forward will grow mag you know, by magnitude. Um, if it's 6.47 million now, and we don't put that 9% um, of our budget into an account, okay, it's going to probably be 7.5 million by next year. So, um, <clears throat> to not beat a dead horse, cost containment has to be a critical portion of what we are looking at, or a critical um, negotiating point um, as we move forward. These um, post-employment benefits are unsustainable, and I am not at all in favor of passing these on to our taxpayers. Anybody else from the public? Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, I uh, also endorse what Bert said. If you're saying you're going to do something in the future, gosh, lots of things happen in the future. It is actually a meaningless statement. And um, I believe that if you really want to tackle this, you have to have a plan, plan of action, and that includes dates of completion. It, it's it's a you know it's time to 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 you know muscle down and get this done. I do um, believe we can do a lot we to to get on top of this, but it will require um, better discipline. Better you know we got to know where, what money's coming in. I mean that seems to be pretty basic. We we also uh, I believe. It, it's my impression that most of our services are consumed with basically people that are not part of the Marinwood CSD. That's fine. We should encourage that. But we should ask those people, we should price those people differently than our, our uh, members of the CSD. Um, I have some ideas for that where you could still generate uh, some income, but basically what it means is we start charging uh, higher pricing for, uh, for some of the stuff that we're doing that's extra. Um, we're, we're not, uh, even though we're a public agency, we can look at this as a business and think of it as a business as it pertains to the outside consumers. Um, and I would encourage that before I would encourage Oh, say going bankrupt or going to the the, the uh, voters for more taxes because as you all we're, we're all taxpayers we all know that we're getting a bunch of taxes this year and you know it's getting to be way too much and pretty soon the camel's back's going to break so anyhow so that's actually an optimistic view of what we can do. Thank you. Um, well, w what didn't you hear? I'll be happy to s specify. I, there's no real need right now, Steve. I would like to uh, well, if you make, a motion. make a motion to approve the uh, uh, grand jury report response as presented. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. I suggested some changes to the first sheet. I guess that wasn't the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's in motion. Wait, wait a minute. Were you suggesting changes to the um, the form that we replied to, or to the response to the that form? Eric Just as I said, to, to add our seven in the first one. Recommendation oh, okay. Let me to amend. change yeah, get the sorry, grammar right in the second one. Okay. Let me least. amend my motion, please. Um, I move to um, approve as amended by Director Schwartz.
I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I, yes, I did. I was great point. <laughs> okay, now the Marin County Grand Jury draft response to the budget squeeze. How will Marin fund its public employee pensions? Um, same kind of approach, as I said. A little bit more of a uh, lead-in uh, commentary prior to getting to the recommendations on this one, but if there are uh, any questions? As I was rereading it, I did catch one uh, grammatical error that I will fix, but it doesn't change the substance of anything. Actually, I do have something to change the substance of the grand jury data. Exhibit F, the grand jury appears to have reflected the safety portion of our, um, of our pension without adding in the miscellaneous employee contribution. If you refer to the um, year-end 2016 audit, um, you'll see that there's approximately $83,600 um, that, that accrues to the miscellaneous employee um, group, and that would change the total to $405,470 in a 6.9% factor as opposed to a 5.5% factor. I think that we should... Uh, essentially let the uh, grand jury know that um, they need to include that as well. I can incorporate that in the opening uh, comments. That would fall and be above the recommendations. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know how that would apply specifically to one of the recommendations we're responding to, but I can certainly add it to the opening comments here. Yeah, I just think that they'd probably be interested in knowing that they got it wrong, got it wrong and maybe fix it. So, um, that may also apply to pre previous year's audit statements if they made the same mistake. I didn't take the time to look at 2015 or before. But again, these unfunded liabilities are part of the reason that um, <clears throat> this district is headed towards, you know, as much as people um, do not want to hear the word bankruptcy, um, without any meaningful conversations on the part of our, uh, primarily our employee group, to change the, particularly the 3 of 50 pension costs uh, or pension plans that we've got on the books right now, without any movement at all. Given the discount rate changes that are going to happen over the next three years, that's exactly where we're heading. It's not just a huge bubble of money that's going to be due 20 years from now. It's also going to be a rising annual cash outlay that's going to compete with the funds that we bring into this district. And I can tell you right now, over the course of this last I won't call them negotiations, but discussions. The firefighters, um, through what I am basically calling blind, uncommunicative, and poor employee group uh, leadership, have now lost probably their strongest advocate. I'm very disappointed in the way these things have gone, and unless. My invitation to have this employee group come to us and start a meaningful dialogue about how we can contain these pensions. We are, our course is set. We're not going to be able to, um, there's no way we're going to be able to pass um, any referendum that's going to increase taxes to the extent that we can afford these pensions. And if we cannot do that, we're on our way to bankruptcy. I hate to say it, but that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, it's a very great point that uh, Jeff just made, but um, I think what what I liked in um, in this write-up was the paragraph about the forecast. I don't think the district has ever utilized uh, this tool before. I have never seen a a long-range forecast of revenue expenses and kind of a nice uh, deep breath plan. So I'm 
I would love to actually put it on a future agenda items. So um, one thing that I can say is um, when we started this whole conversation about pensions and the pension difficulties that we're in right now, leveraging the, um, the annual actuarial statement does come out with, okay, here, here's what the next five years are going to look like, okay? Next year's is going to come with, oh, by the way, we're changing the discount rate, you know, and that's the impact it's going to have. So those figures will be available to us in an actuarial report. If we can do a reasonable job of forecasting revenues over that same period, then we can calculate the amount, you know, the percentage that those pension costs are going to give us without, you know, putting our limited staff through a, you know, a detailed budgetary exercise. No, yeah, no, yeah. No. So that's something I think we can do. Are they giving you any indication as to when they might raise the discount rate? Because we're set for 17, 18, correct? Yeah, it's going to start raising at 18, uh, 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 20, 20, 20. So we know that those numbers are yeah. minus, the, minus what the, the lower Yeah, rate we, we've presented that in previous meetings. But it's also, low. you know, last time I looked, they also said, here's the possible impact of these mm -hmm. discounts. 30%, 40%, you know. 30% increase to the what we're going to have to pay next year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly. the first time I've heard that. That's yeah. substantial. Okay. Perfect. Being the, the new guy on the board still, I mean, that's the way I feel. Uh, when you look, and I, I think we've talked about this earlier, but when we look at our budget, we don't look in bad shape. We have ex we show expenses, we show revenue, we show, and it comes out balanced or maybe even a little surplus. But in that isn't somehow included the the pension liabilities, and it makes us appear, at least to me, it did originally, and it made to others that we have more money that could go to other things. Right. And then I don't know how. That can be at least graphically shown, but well, I think that's legally mandated. You know that, right? Next year, the Gasbys are going to be legally mandated to show the balance sheet accounts as well as the income statement accounts. So those liabilities will be on the balance sheet, and we are ha going to have to publish them. They previously were hidden in the notes yes. that people were not really looking at. Right. Again, that's not a current year revenue thing, but it's uh, what what it does show is by um, virtue of not putting enough money away, i.e. cash out the door, mm -hmm. that this liability in the future continues to grow. And one of the things that this grand jury report has just demonstrated is we are already negative in terms of our assets versus our liabilities. And it will continue to get worse. But, but it's my concern is if someone just looks at our budget, we don't look like we're in bad shape. And that's why and that's we want to we want to have revenues on the I mean sorry, reserves on the budget and actually put the money in an account so it takes it away from the profit so yes. to speak, and also that we take um, OPEB and we start to pay that down so it doesn't look like we're wildly profitable when the fact is we're not. Exactly. Anything else? Not on this subject. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, any comments from the public? Stephen? Yes, I want to thank uh, Jeff and the rest of you for the, the cold splash of water. We need it. Let's do it every month for short, which is every, every month for a while. So to motivate us to do the right things, I too believe that it's a moral obligation that we fulfill uh, our promises. Um, and we really should be doing everything we can. Now, with regards to the fire department, um, I kind of, I take the view of Bill Hansel, uh, who was trying to work something out with uh, San Rafael. He said, you know, we're saving them uh, a uh, fire uh, station. I figure that's worth two, three million dollars a year. The amount of services our fire department and our rec department spends outside our district is, it's good that we're serving that, but we're, it's, the, the, the uh, costs need to be assessed. 
I would say, as part of your negotiation, and just something to put everyone on notice, that you form a committee or whatever and see what other realistic options there are for either bringing in Cal Fire, a private fire company, or utilizing one of the, the other cities uh, for our fire services. I just don't see that we have a sustainable model uh, for that. And, and, um, and likewise, I think we just need to just bear down on the cost structure and our pricing structure and just make sure uh, you know, we're getting enough money in. We're doing great. Uh, the, the rec department's doing absolutely fantastic. But I have the sense that there's so much leakage going on that could really, uh, we could put to the bottom line to start paying off these benefits. And we really owe it to ourselves and our employees to do the best we can financially to secure them the futures that they uh, justly deserve. Thanks. Thank you. I would qualify by that, that by saying a reasonable future. Well, <laughs> I don't Not know. Yeah, a reason. Yeah. I, I, I hate to agree with Stephen. I can tell you that the, the, the Cal Fire future operation of the fire department is something that the fire commission is going to begin working on next month. Mm -hmm. so, um, any other comments? Okay, I'll call for a motion. <clears throat> Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the response to the um, budget squeeze uh, grand jury report as amended. I second that. All those in favor? <laughs>